If there's one thing I've wanted for a while, it's a new Bomberman game. For years I waited, and indeed I thought all hope was lost, until Nintendo announced that they were releasing a brand new Bomberman title for the Switch. My spirits were lifted, soaring high into the clouds until release day came, and the general consensus was that it was a hot-coiled turd, rife with flies and typhoid fever. So I did what any sensible person would do in the same situation and desperately tried to relive the nostalgic happiness of my misspent youth by playing an indie reimagining of an original classic in a desperate attempt to feel happiness that will never come back. Welcome to Robert's Game Corner, everybody. Today we're looking at Bomb Slinger by Mode 4, a game that isn't Bomberman, but is also currently in early access at time of recording. So bear that in mind as we continue on our voyage of discovery. You play as the Bomb Slinger, a bandit who left the outlaw life to start a family. Your old posse, being the jealous losers that they are, decide to burn your house down and kill your wife, forcing you to take up your old mantle in a quest for revenge. Now if you ask me, it seems like the Bomb Slinger has bigger issues than a bunch of outlaws. For starters, the entire countryside seems to have been overrun by a genetically modified wheat, which has consumed every loose piece of ground in sight. On top of that, roving gangs of naked old men, presumably infected with the GMO brain parasite, have taken up stalking the wheat with pitchforks. Later on, you find out that it's not just the wheat, but all plant life, which seems to have been affected by the growth hormone, and civilization as we know it is all but lost. I suspect the Dark Wizards have something to do with this. Because let's face it, once you put on a robe and call lightning out of the sky with an ancient language, you're not going back to working at the movie theater. While on the surface the game has a lot of similarities to Bomberman, the comparison quickly ends once you start playing. The very first thing you'll notice is that Bomb Slinger is a roguelike. Personally, I don't like roguelikes. There's nothing wrong with them, they're just not my go-to thing. And really, I kind of feel like the idea's been done to death. Much like indie horror games in which you lack any means to combat the monster and have to run away and hide at every turn from it, roguelike elements are a concept that worked really well one or two times, and so the indie community collectively decided to work that particular idea to death and then have sex with the corpse. As far as being a roguelike, I found it to be okay. Hardcore roguelike fans might find it lacking since the length is somewhat short, and the time it would take to unlock all of the upgrades seems like it would be less than other titles. My assumption, however, is that content will be added later. Or so we hope. For me, the comparison to its source fell apart when I got the gun. Yes, in addition to roguelike elements, you have a mana bar which is used for abilities, one of which is shooting a gun. Why bomb your enemies when you can just shoot them from across the map? Also, if the ability to kick bombs is in the game, I never got it. This to me highlights the one core issue with the roguelike design. You start with nothing. Not even the ability to kick a bomb until you either find it or die enough times to unlock it. And that's ridiculous. Who looked at Bomberman and said to themselves, you know what this game could use? The restriction of core features and permadeath. The game is stylized well enough, the art and music are good even if the looping track wore on a little bit. The only thing I have to insist gets looked at before the game comes out of early access is the issue of how enemies spawn, both in relation to how you load into the room and where obstacles are placed. At one point I was loaded into an area and a machine gunner was spawned down the lane from me. By the time I was given control of the character, the machine gunner had already acquired me as a target and begun firing, hitting me before I could even move. And that's bullshit, seriously. Also, when enemies spawn on the same spot as fire, they don't move from that spot. This led to another scenario in which a sleepy redneck with a shotgun was positioned in such a way that I couldn't approach him without taking damage, since the only way I could place a bomb in such a way that would kill him would be to get within one space of him, at which point he would immediately wake up and shoot me, and he wouldn't path out from that corner because the fire prevented him from moving. So yeah, having to eat unavoidable damage in order to progress is something that needs work. But otherwise, Bomb Slinger's pretty alright. I intend to give it another look once it comes out of early access. Check it out if you thought Bomberman needed to be a roguelike. Or just if you like roguelikes in general. Or if you like games that have local multiplayer since it has a localized versus mode. And that's always a plus. Suck it consoles, that's what you get for abandoning local multiplayer. Now PC is king of sitting on your couch with your friends and playing video games. Eat it. Eat it.